Oh, you're the savior. Keep on reminding me. All right. So for this, we're going to go into our client, which is our React app. And then we're going to go into our source and into our components. We're going to do a new file and we'll call this, you know, fact form.js. And then we can just kind of fill this out. So I'm just going to keep this simple because what I want to do first is just get the React router portion of this set up. Okay, so if, if, let's kind of remember what we did with React Router. First of all, to set up React Router, we use this browser router component that wraps our app. And then from there, we, in our app.js, we can define some paths. And then a specific path is going to render, can render a specific component. So I can come in here and do like a just come in here and do like a fact new, fact slash new. I could call it, you know, yo. But I think fact slash new is kind of nice because even though it's not doing that HTTP request, it kind of still matches that convention. I do fact slash new, and then that can take me to my fact form. So I could test this out by just, you know, copying this URL and typing it in my browser. So that did a search. And there we go, fact form. And then I can go back to my facts. Where did I have, did I stop my server? Yes, I did. and back to my home. Now, I don't think I want necessarily the new link in my nav bar. I think I, I just want it on this page as like a button. So I'm not gonna add a link to um, this form here. I'm gonna do it in my facts component. So let's do like a div. I could just do this as a button. I can do it as a div, whatever. New fact. So normally this would be like an A tag, right? When we like last or like week three, we would do an A tag to do an href and that would go do an HTTP request. This is not doing that. It, we can just, we're just gonna do this as a div and then I can have an on click. Now I want to somehow navigate to this page. Now a little bit, and let me just show you how to do this. I can do props dot navigation dot navigate. I hope this is not the re React Native one, but we'll try it out. 
And then I can throw in the URL here. So let's try that. And fresh navigation. Did I spell that wrong? Let me comment this out. Okay. So one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come inspect my element. I'm going to use my React tools here. Components. And I'm going to come to this facts page. Oh yeah, okay. I was I was thinking React Native. Um, so notice how I have these three props on here. I haven't passed any props, but I do have some props on this. I have history, I have location, and then I have match. So I'm getting these by default from React Router because in my when I'm rendering this fax component, I am doing it in a route component. So behind the scenes, it's really like, you know, I'm rendering this component and I'm getting like a history prop, like, and a, and a um, location prop. So that's kind of happening automatically because I'm doing it in this route component. And then if I look at history, um, it has all these methods. So this is th these are like the things I can do with history. History dot go back. What do you think history go back does without even knowing React Router? Any idea? Uh, probably go back to the previous page, like the back arrow on a browser. Yeah, exactly. So this this history object is kind of ways, it gives us a way we can navigate. So we can actually push um, a route onto our, it's really a stack behind the scenes, but we can call this push method and give it a path. And that will take us to that path. So let's go back to our facts. That was the one, this is, React Native that I was trying to do. It's history.push. So props.history push should be defined. Now that should take us to our fact page. Let's try running this again. I have a bad URL. URL in here, I have facts slash fact. Is that what I put here? Oh yeah, this needs to be fact slash new. Fact slash new, because that's what it's defined as in here. I need those to match in my app.js. So here are the facts, fact form. Is that not clicking on that? Oh, so I, if I go to, let's look at this bug. I go to localhost 3000, I go to fax, and that's going to fax new. Or the, that, that's, sorry, that's going to my fact form, which is my fax new path. Well, what's going on here? I'm actually rendering this fax component and this on click is being called. So then it's navigating. So I need to wrap this in an arrow function. Let's go back, facts, there it is. Now when I click on new fact, there's my fact form. And in my fact form, I can do something like this. I can do another div, I can say something like go back. And then on click, I could once again grab my props.history object that I get, because this one is also, my fact form is also rendered by this route component. So I could do um, props.history, and then I can call that go back method. Okay. 
and then wrap this in an arrow function as well. Spell that right, go back. So now I can navigate between these components. And this can be a way, I think React Router can kind of make your code a little more simpler in a way, because we might not have to worry about is like passing props as much. And then, I mean, let's just, let's kind of like build this out and maybe we'll kind of decide, you can kind of decide what's just simpler. Because it's a little bit of setup, right? But not too bad to get this, um, route set up. So let's go build out our form. And I've already forgot my what my data looks like. So this is where I would want to like go to like my schema. These are the things we have in our database. It might be nice just to know how they're spelled. And remember stars, this is like auto, automatically is set to zero. So I don't need to have that in my form. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm just gonna do like a P tag for text. Let's call this fact. I think that's a little better label. We can do an input to value equals, I call this text. And then on change, this will be my change handler. So we'll do our, grab our event, then we'll do set text to e.target.value. Well, these are not defined, this text and set text, I need to create some state. Also add a button here, and type, let's just do on click. Let's do a type equals submit, type equals submit. Let's say something like add. Then on our form, we can have our on submit handler. Submit. So maybe just let's see if we're actually if we can grab our text right here. So we can go test this really quick. Use states not defined, so I need to import that. Use state. Go ahead, run that. Go to my console, click add. What's going on here? Every time I click add, you can see my page refreshing. So yeah, oh yeah, I need to come in here, grab that event about prevent target or default so it doesn't refresh so 
And I can come here, type in, the text is still there and it's working and it's not refreshing. Uh, now that I have that working, I can come in here, copy and paste this stuff. We'll actually see maybe how in the future we'll create, you can create your own custom hooks. So something like use state is a hook. You can create your own custom hook and we'll see maybe down the road, you know, we're doing a lot of copy and pasting here. We can create our own custom hook to kind of handle some of this copy logic. But for now, let's just copy and paste it. Let's come in here and do our source. I'm gonna go ahead and make this source, some source state. Spruce source, let's fill that right. Let's also do um, username. And grab my username. Set username and do our source. So here, I'm just gonna log the object. Just wanna see if I'm grabbing all of these values, text, source, and our username. Cool. So we've got that set up now. Okay, let me just check something in our fax controller. I don't think we really have this set up. That's okay. That's fine. Let's keep going. Let's let's try to see because our back end's not set up. So let's say I'm just a front end person and I kind of want to try to do as much work as I can without the back end. I'm just kind of doing this independently. There's another person doing the back end. So I still want to get as far as I can with this task. So let's, let's see how far we can get just on the front end. So what I'd want to do here <clears throat> is on my handle submit, I'm gonna want to do an Axios call. An Axios call so that I want, I'm gonna want this to be async. And then I can do my try catch so here I could try to do my call I could say let response equal await axios dot put or sorry post and then I'm going to go to slash fax and then I can go ahead and pass this object here with text, username, and source. Okay, so now the next thing is what, so if successful, what should I do? This is, I think this is one of like the things, because since we're not using like this Rails convention anymore, like this standard CRUD and like standard pass, there's, there's gonna be times like this where it's like, well, I just posted something, what do I wanna do? There's not like a set answer. It just kind of depends on the UX and UI. So in my mind, it makes sense that like once we create something, um, we would go back to the fax page. So we would create it and just go back to the fax. Or maybe if we had a show page for a specific fact, we could go to the show page for that specific fact we just created. 
So I'd say for now, since we don't have a fact page, let's just go back to the facts page. So I see I have this props.history go back. I'm not sure if I, I don't necessarily, I don't know where maybe I came from. Like this one, I wanna be exact. I say, hey, push. And let's go back to the facts page. And actually, what am I missing here in this post request? Uh, slash API in front of it. Yeah, slash API. And this, like I said on Friday, this is gonna help kind of keep your, this is one way to really distinguish between, hey, is this like a API call to my database or is this like a React router link? That's just kind of going to a different page on my front end. So since we set up that convention of namespacing our backend with API, I think it makes your code more readable. Does anything that doesn't have the API, oh, that's just a React router, like navigate to a different component, but API is like actually doing, interacting with your server. <laughs> Okay, I don't do anything with that response, but let's let's try this out. You know, maybe right now I can do an alert. Error. Console.log. Error. Cool. So now if I run this, I need to import Axios. You also need to fix the spelling of Axios. Oh, I spelled on. Gosh, I'm going to say. Okay. So import Axios. Cool. So now I click add. There's my error. I was expecting that, right? It's a 404 because this route's not defined, but I'm pretty sure that is going to be the path. Like that probably shouldn't have to change. You know, if I wanted to check. Is this, does this actually work? My props.history.push. You go ahead and like throw that in here. You know, I, I could, if I wasn't sure, I could, you know, go in and try to test that. And boom, that takes me back. And you know, in this case, that takes me back to my facts. And if you remember, we have a use effect on here. And let's, let's watch these logs really quick. Um, and I'm gonna get rid of this alert because it's kind of annoying. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh. So my fat component is mounting. Then I, I do the use effect, which grabs my facts from my API. Now I'm going to clear this and I'm gonna to go to new fact. Now my fact component unmounts, that facts component. So it's unmounting because in my use effect, in my facts, I had this weird return function inside of my use effect function that just logs, hey, this, it's just saying, hey, this component's unmounting. And then when I type in my fact, <clears throat> and click add, and it'll clear this console again. I get my 404, which we don't care about, but I go back to my facts component and that mounts it again. And that does the API call again. So I really shouldn't need to do anything else. So I don't have to like pass down a prop to like add that. It's just already set up to do that. So that's a nice, by using React Router, I don't have to come in here and do like an add fact function. And you know, like pass that down to my fact form. So that can kind of simplify their code. And then yeah, I can throw this up. So I, I can remove that. 
you know, another thing I could maybe do here is just like a, you know, while I'm waiting for the back end, like I could come in here and start doing air handling. Like if that was part of my tasks, I could definitely, I don't need a back, I could start doing some air handling with this. And let's just keep this like really simple. By default, I'm gonna set this to null. And then I could do something like this. Like I could see, hey, do I have an error? And so I'm just, instead of like doing that annoying alert, see alert's kind of annoying because you have to like hit the bot button. I'm just gonna have like this, you know, error occurred and maybe I can give it like some, you know, red styling. So if I have an error, and let's just do a Boolean, let's just have this be a Boolean, like set it to false. So by default, I don't have an error, but if I get hit here, I want to set that to true. Go to a new fact, add error curve. So there's some like basic error handling that you could do while you were waiting for the back end. Um, and something else I need to remember to do is before I handle the submit, I just want to, because if there was an error previously, I just want to make sure I set that to false beforehand. So yeah, as far as as far as the front end is concerned, you know, I could go in and I could style, but like, I I've like pretty much got this done, right? Even though there's not a back end, so I could come into GitHub, I'm gonna split my pane, we get add git commit dash m, and could do like a fact. Yeah, now let's go, so that's all committed. Now let's go do this on the back end. So on the back end, well, what I need to do is I need to go into my routes and I need to define that route. So it's gonna be a post to facts. That's gonna to go to my facts and create. Now, since I'm, since we're following the conventions of just like how to name these routes, like I'm not gonna have to change anything on the front end. You know, if I'm creating something, it should just be a post to whatever the model is plural. So we're kind of like, I almost wouldn't even need to communicate with my backend person if we're, hey, we're just gonna follow like the standard Rails conventions, like naming conventions for routes. So then I can go to my facts controller, do my create. Oh, I haven't done anything here. So yeah, let's, let's create the private method. Let's do our def um, fact params. Let's go ahead and do this. Params dot require. Fact, out permit. Let's go ahead and do Yav's yeah, username. Source um, text. And you know what the stars here, this, you know, our front end's not using them, but maybe we, we say, hey, you can give us stars if you want. 
are to not. I think if you're creating a fact, it might make sense not to give it stars. I don't know. It's a little weird since we don't actually have users and this isn't like a real like grading app. But. Let's just, yeah, give it, let's just say if they wanted to, they can pass the stars. So then I can come in here and just do my normal CRUD actions. No fact.new, get that to fact params. Um, I could come in here, I could check, like, did they give me facts? Equals, what do I have? Did they give me any stars? If they did, I'll use like fact.stars. I'll use what they gave me. If not, I'll default it to zero. And then I can come in here and do my fact.save. Else end. Render fact. Sorry, render JSON fact. Or I could do my render JSON. Maybe I want to do like an error message. Fact errors. And give this a status at 422. Forget if this one has the semicolon. Do my unprocessable entity. So now that's done, that, that should be my back end. We could go in and test this in Postman. I'm gonna say this for the hackathon. I'm gonna tell the TAs this and everyone when they grade you, because we're largely grading you on, it's largely gonna be on your CRUD actions. It's like where the majority of the grade is going to be and you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a lot of work where you might not get it all complete. But if you can come into Postman and show us that like you have the create working on at least your back end, we'll give you some partial credit for that. Because what, what can kind of happen, especially on the first hackathon is like people like show their apps and then there's like, there's very little to like dem demo like as far as like functionality, so it's not fully functional, but then they have like a really functional backend. So it's like, man, they did a lot of work, but it's just hard to tell if they did a lot of work because there's, it's the UI got screwed up. So if you can come in and you know how to use Postman and do a post request and like do some API calls to show that your backend's working, we'll give you some partial credit for the CRUD actions. You won't get, you're definitely gonna get more if you have the, the full UI working. But so if I do a post request to API slash facts and I give it some text, send that. Um, params value or empty is fact. So I'm getting an error, this is useful. If, if you get an error on Postman, might be good, might get a better error here. And then you can kind of look at your parameters. See, I can see I'm passing my params, but looks like it's like line 28 in fact params. And then let's see if this is giving me, yeah, see, this is also giving me a 400 status. So 
So what this is, this is telling me is like, this maybe looks like this is a bad request because this is a bad request because I didn't do this. I got to wrap this in that fact, that text in this fact thing. Let's send that. There we go. So yeah, just because it fails doesn't mean it's the back end's fault. If it's a 400 error, see that 400 error was useful because it's like, oh man, I did something wrong on the request, not the back end. Cool. So that's working. So now my back end's working. So I could do a commit for that. Create fact back end. And you know, we would both, both of the, like of the developers could push up and you know, both would pull the master to get the other person's changes. I'm up to date, so it's kind of silly, but I would pull, like you both pull from GitHub. So I get like back end would get the front end person's changes and the front end person would get the back end person's changes. And now we can go see if this is just magically working, which it probably should. So one, two, three, disperse. And there's my fact. And since that, like how I had that set up with the React router, boom, I don't have to do any of that prop passing. Questions on that? Cool, so let's do the edit. And let's, let's do it again using React Router. Kind of the same thing. Let's just go to a form that takes us there. So once again, when it comes to the hackathon, you're not gonna get points for like using React Router or like having a toggle, like toggle your form here. It's, it's up to you how you create these. So you could do this all on the same page like we did last week, or you could use React Router to go to different pages, or you could do a combo. You could even use, well, no, you can't do that, yeah. I was gonna say you could even like render a form from Rails, but you can't actually do that. Don't wanna do that because they're two separate apps now. So let's look at how we could do this with the React Router. And let's go ahead and set this up. So I'm gonna create a new path in my app.js. And I'm going to call this ID, colon ID. And I'm still going to have that go to the fact form. I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to throw this above. This is, I just kind of want to show this error. So this is going to be important, like the order. Because facts slash new is going to match this path, right? This is kind of like exactly the same in Rails where this colon, whatever I call it, this is like a, a variable now, it can be anything. So facts slash anything, take me to the fact form. Facts slash new, take me to the fact form. Well, why do I have two of these Pass. They seem like they're doing the same thing, but there there is a reason why uh, this is this is important. That we need both of them, and the order is important because right now the order is wrong. So let's let's look at why this is important. Because I'm going to reuse this form, or should we just create a? Do you want to create a completely new edit form? 
You could do that as well. Once again, if that's easier, and you know this is going to be like an edit, you can do that. We're really not going to be giving like giving you points on that type of stuff. So I could just take my fact form, copy it inside of here. Oh, this is edit fact form. Yeah, let's let's do it like this because this will be a good little demo too. Okay, and then I can like right here just to make sure it's the right form. I'm going to say edit. So I just made those three changes. Just change the name of the file and the deep, the export and change this to edit. And then to remind ourselves in app.js, let's go ahead and import that one. So edit fact form. So I have these two paths. So now one goes, they go to different components. Probably need a link somewhere. So I think the good place for the link is going to be on the card, like an edit button on the card. So I'll go to my fact component. And okay, so with that, we saw we did a, where is it? I'm just gonna do this. Where do I wanna put this? So it doesn't really matter for now. Maybe I'll just put this right here. See what it looks like. I'm not sure what it's gonna look like. And then we'll say edit. And then, yeah, the way I'm destructuring props here, I'm gonna want that history prop. So I'll grab my history prop. And just because we're destructuring in this component, just doing a different style. And I can do my on click history dot push. Now I want to match that path, which is going to be facts, and then the ID of the fact. And we have ID, right? Yeah, we're pulling the ID. And really actually, well, okay, let, let's leave it like this. because I do have these paths, the same name. So let's look at this. I'm gonna refresh, where's that edit button? So I have an error. Okay, so here's my error. Cannot read property push of undefined. So what is undefined? History? Yeah, history is undefined. That's weird. Let's go comment this out. Um, I'm just gonna inspect this again. Go to my profiler, my React tool. Where is it? Component, sorry. You know, come to the stack component, look at props. Hmm, I don't have that history prop. It's here on my facts, but it's not on my on my fact component. Why is that? Well, here, here's a little. This is kind of what I was trying to say in our app in our app app.js. Since we're rendering our component in a route component, React Router will, will automatically give us those props. Our fact component is getting rendered. Um, right here in our facts component. So it is not getting that prop. So how I want to do this is I'm actually gonna use a hook 
from React Router. And this is, this is a really, this is one of the nice things about hooks. It's, it's all these libraries are now creating their own hooks and making stuff like this a lot easier than what it used to be. So if I want that history pro, or that history object and I'm not rendering that in a route, well, I just need to import use history from React Router. And then I can just define it right here, const history equals use history. And now if I click on this, let's uncomment that out. I'm gonna also pull this off right here. I don't want the, definitely don't want that defined twice. Cause now I'm not pulling it from props. I'm using the use history hook. So if I click edit, and we'll go back. Let's go to my home facts. Oh, I'm doing that same thing again where my on click right here and my here, I'm actually forgot to wrap that in a anonymous function. So it was calling it. So let's go back to our facts. There's the edit button. And now I'm back at three. I can go back. If I go to my new facts, that's also taking me to my edit. And that is because this was the bug I was trying to show you. The order of these is important. I'd want to match backslash new first. Does this make sense? Because Backslash new is going to match this ID path because that matches it. So I need this more specific one to go up top. So now when I go back and I go to my new fact, now that's taking me to my add. Something I also might want to do just to kind of, you know, if I was trying to like, I could do facts ID slash edit here and have that be the path. That'd be another way to do that. And then we just need to change that here in my link to match it. So you get to choose what these are. I do need the ID here. That's the next thing we're gonna need to do. Add, edit. But yeah, now I want the information. So there, there, there's a way to do this with React Router to pass the information down. But how else could we do this? If we, if, how else could we get the data for this one thing in our edit form? We could do a get request. Yeah. So let's just do a get request. We could pass it down through React Router, but I think that's a little more in depth than I, that I wanna go into today. So let's just, when we go to our edit fact form, let's do a get request. So what hook are we gonna need for that? So when this component mounts, we're gonna to wanna to do a use effect. So we can do a const use effect. And then we can say like get fact. Kind of just like, it's not that it matters. I like defining these up here. So we can do our use effect. So then we can write this function, get fact. And this is gonna be an async function. Axios, so I can do like let response equal await. Axios.get. 
All right, so this is gonna to go to facts and then the ID. So in my, so part of the thing I needed to do with, re, I need to get this ID and I have part of it done because when I go to this route, I have the ID in the URL. So I definitely, I need to grab that ID because I want to do a get request. So how do I get that ID? Let me import Axios. Well, I can use a hook. Let's see if we can actually just see this in the, um, in the tools. Because this can be helpful, like if you get familiar with the tools, this might help remind you of how to like do this stuff. So I'm not even gonna do anything here. Um, let's just go back and try to get rid of this error. Oh, I spelled async wrong. Oh no, I didn't, I just have this right here. And then that, okay. What is that trying to do? Oh, I have this equal sign. Okay, so I had a syntax error. Okay, so if I come to my, I'm on my edit fact form. Let's see, let's see if I go into, is it location, history, match, params ID. Looks like in my, in this match prop, there's this params and it has this ID. And that's three, so there it is. Let me show you this. If I come into app.js and change this to like something IDS, DF, DF, whatever. See, now my params is going to be IS, IDS. It's going to be whatever I called it in this route right here. I'm just going to, ID is a nice name for that. So I'm going to keep that ID. So let's go ahead and try to grab that. So in my fact form, let's, in my edit fact form, let's just go ahead and do this. Console.log props.match.params, I think it was, .id. And see if that's the actual ID. Go back, edit. Is it not logging it? Console.log. It's undefined, I might not see that. Oh, my use effect is totally off. Use effect is a function that takes a function. Sorry. I'm just gonna rewrite this. Sorry. And yeah, I shouldn't be, I don't know what I was doing calling cons. Anyway, sorry, use effect. I want to just define this function. And then also do the empty array. Cause this is only gonna work on mount. And then I want to console.log this, this whole thing. ID equals three. There's my ID. Now I have the thing that I need to do my Axios call. So I could do something like this. And then call my get fact in here. So we're going to go do a get request to facts and then pass it the ID that's in our pram. And I keep on forgetting this API. This is, I need to append that with API. And wrap this in a try. 
catch block. And this is console.log error, which we're going to get. But you know, we could do error handling now. We could also do our here, we'd want to do our props.history.push. And then we could go back to the facts. After we're, we're successful. So I could do that same thing here just to test it, just to make sure, because this is going to fail, because this path is not defined. Actually, what am I doing? I don't want to push. Sorry. I, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I want to get the data. What would be the next step after I get the data? What would I want to do? Set the state. Yeah, set the state. So I'm gonna to wanna to do like set state or set text. I'm gonna to wanna to set all of these. So this would be like res.data. Should be text. And then this should be res.data.source. And this should be res.data.username. Maybe I, it might be hard to guess because the back end's not done what it's exactly going to look like, but I can get close to it. And then I could also test this here. Maybe instead of doing this, I could just you know hard code some values just to see if like is my reasoning like is, is that going to work? Because right now my back end's not working. It's not set up. So it's, this is going to fail because I'm going to get a 404. But I could come in and I could check like, well, what I'm thinking about doing is I do a use effect. I do an Axios call, it should get the data. I mean, this should work, but right now it's failing. Well, let's see if it populates my form. And this is all set text. So I want one to be set source. See that already set source and set username. Okay. So if I go to edit, I mean, I get my 404 error, but I can see that it loads up these values. So it's like, cool, my logic's working. I can get rid of that for now. Just wanted to do like a check. Hopefully that will work. So now that's set up. And now I can do my um, handle submit. Well, I don't want this to be a post. I want this to be a put to API facts. And then I want to give it the ID. Just come in here and grab that. That's the ID. I need to interpolate that. Now I am, I'm duplicating this code and I have two of these components that are doing very similar things. I think it might be better to like throw these into one, but like I said, for the hackathon, it's all about getting it functional. You're not gonna get points for creating this reusable form. You're gonna get points for making your edit function work. So you're, you're, when you're deciding how to do things, you should be solely deciding on like the basic, just getting the CRUD actions to work. Cool. So that should be right, right? API facts, and then we pass it that, that ID. And then, yeah, here we'd want to go ahead and push to facts. It's kind of the same thing with the create, you know, it should update the database and then take us back to facts, which will reload the data and then we'll see it. So let's just see if this is working. We come in here I mean, this doesn't really matter. I can hit edit, boom, that takes me back to the facts. 
obviously that's not saving to my database or it's not showing up in my UI because it's not hooked up to the back end. But I think that's pretty good with the front end. So let's 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 commit this, finish the back end, and then we'll take a break. But because we'll just I kind of just want to show how you know this we can really start to break up the task now. Oh, I need to add. And then yeah, I could like push that up. So yeah, let's just pretend like, you know, at the same time I was doing that, now the back end person is at the same time doing the back end. And you are going to see like the back end is a lot easier for this. Because the back end. Oh, I have. Okay. The back end, I come in here and I now want to create this path, fax ID update. Well, now I have two paths that are the exact same, going to two, trying to do two different things. So I'm definitely going to need to change one of these. Just going to screw up the front end. Does everyone see that? I think I'm going to change this one because it's a, it's a little more generic. Or sorry, it's a, sorry, it's more custom. It's like it's like doing a rating. So this is the one I'm going to change. But yeah, that now is going to break my back end. We'll look at that in one second. Um, but now I can have this one going to my update. So now I can come in and do my update. It's going to copy my create method. Because it's very similar. Um, what I'm going to do instead of creating a new fact, I'm going to find my fact in my database using the ID that was passed. Um, I'm not going to do this logic. It's going to, if they gave me stars, I'm going to update it. If they don't, I'm just going to keep it whatever it was because it should be set by then. And then I'm going to try to update here. Yeah, then I could go check in, I could go check in Postman. I could do a put request to API fax. Maybe I have them, I should have them with three or let's just update this one, ID six. What is X? Let's go ahead and update this. Let's actually just give it a source because it doesn't have it. So fact source. Send wrong number of arguments. So that's a 500 error. So 500 error, I should definitely go to my server. I mean, it, it did tell me there, but wrong number of arguments, given zero, expected one. So in my, in my update method. And yeah, I forgot here to give it Line 27, update, this method is expecting a parameter. If I don't give it one, it's gonna fail because it's gonna be like, well, how do I update this if you don't give me any data? So for that, I'm just gonna pass it the fact params function that returns that sanitized data. And I can test that again. And then the source is updated. I can't like describe how, or how useful or how helpful it is, like, or can't stress, like using, like finding that bug. 
before I tried to interact with the UI. Like by using Postman, I was able to find that bug. It was super quick to find, super easy, because I hadn't done that much work. If I was trying to maybe test that with like using my React UI, I, and you're new to errors, you might be like, oh, is this a React error or is this a Rails error? But since that was just like, I had just changed my backend, I knew it had nothing to do with React. And it, you know, I was able to go in and find it really quick. Likewise, when I now go test this with my React app, I can kind of have some confidence that my backend, this function is working to some extent. Can't be like 100% confident, but I can say, hey, I tested my update method in Postman and I saw it work. So that can help like narrow down where the bug might stem from. So that's good. Um, let's go ahead and yeah, test it in our front end now. So if I come to that one, well, uh, let's do our get to that one we don't have done. So that was another route I need to create for this task. I need to do my get facts to slash um, ID to the facts show. Let me just do this one really quick. This one's pretty simple. Def show. I could just do this in a before action, but I'm being lazy. Render JSON fact.find params ID. Once again, could test that in Postman really quick. Let's do a get request API facts slash six. Really, did I, I did not mean to do an error on here. Routes. No route matches. Do I have like something weird going on here? API. Facts. So there's maybe I did it four. I know I have an ID with four. I think you put post instead of get. Oh, I did. <laughs> Thank you. So that, yeah, that'd be a, yeah. Thank you for catching that. <clears throat> Okay, so that, that's working. Once again, caught that bug. That was not intentional, so glad I tested that one out. Now I can go test out my React app. I'm kind of thinking this should just work. That's how I had it set up. Yeah, that's working. So that's not always gonna be the case that like you do your back end and your front end and you merge them together and they magically work. There might be some things here and there you need to fix, but, or kind of like, you know, tie together some loose ends. But the way we've done this, these could have been, you could really have like your back end and front end people doing completely different things. And once you combine it, it just works. So yeah, I can click edit. That takes me to the form. It does a get request to get the values. So my edit forms populated. I can edit them. So I think using React Router and this method, does that does it seem like it's easier? At least to code it. Not so much of that prop passing. It's less messy, I think. Yeah. But it doesn't mean you don't need to know how to like prop, pass the props because you might have you might have the requirement of hey I want the edit form here, and you can't be like, well I want that to go to a new page because it's easier for me to code. <laughs> the project manager, will, I mean, you could say that, but they might be like, 
uh, yeah, still, let's just do it this way because it, it's going to be better. But for the hackathon, you can do it however you want. But yeah, sorry, one thing that we did break. So now if I go and we'll, we'll fix this just to make this point and then we'll take a break. Pretty sure. Oh, wait, does that just. Oh, okay, that, I guess that is working. Because Okay, so I made this path here. So I'm no longer going to my rate function. I'm going to my update function. 932. 932, and I could do some puts inside of here. So I guess we can we can take a break. If you want to kind of try to see what's going on and then we'll talk about it when we get back. But I'll let you kind of think about this. Because here, here, here's, the, here's the thing or here's the, here, I was kind of expecting it to break, but it didn't and now I see why it didn't, but I want you to think about it. So I have this put request that I switched to fax ID rate. That should take me to my rate method because in my fact component where I rate something like this, this doesn't match that path. It's API facts ID. So that doesn't go to my rate method anymore. It's going to my update method. But my update method can actually handle that. So it doesn't break because I give it the stars. I'm just passing it stars. I'm not passing it the rest, but so kind of see if you can work yourself through that in the code. And I'll go ahead and push this up to GitHub too. So you have this example, but let's take a break. It's been a second and let's come back at, let's do 1255.